Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to do a quick review of how inequalities work on a plane, and then we're going to look at systems of inequalities. And we should probably start off, let's go over here to a quick Desmos graphing application. If I have the graph, let's say y equals 1, okay, think about this line right here. For any point in this line, scroll along, you can see that second number is always 1. The x value is changing, but y is always 1. So if I was to type in y is greater than 1, it makes sense that I shade above that line, but don't include it. You see that dash right there? We don't want to include when y equals 1. We want all the y values where it's greater than 1, and we shade above it. If we want to also shade that line in, we put the equal sign. And then conversely, if I just want to shade below it, I just type in all the y values less than 1. Any point I pick here, like this point 0, 0, the y value of that point is less than 1, where it is here. So any point I pick over here in this region, those heights would be less than 1. And if I also want to include that line as well, I type equals, right? Now, let's go back to the example where y is greater than 1. If I, <clears throat> if I add a slope to this line that's not 0, right now you can think of uh, the form y equals mx plus b. And in this case right here, we have y is greater than mx plus b, where m is 0. We don't see that, right? It's canceled out. So 0 times x plus 1. b is our 1 value. It's our y-intercept. But what I want to do is kind of mess around with this equation over here. Let's put mx plus 1. And let's have a slope here. And let me just turn that back to 0. And what you, if you do, if you follow this along, as we increase the slope in a positive way, you can see that what it means to shade above the line kind of takes on that half like split of the plane. So we have this left-hand side of the line, but what it's really doing is shading directly above your line here. So at any point we pick in the region, the y value of that point will be greater than the value of mx plus b. Remember, when you graph this line right here, any point on this line, uh, it will always be true that y is equal to, in this case, well, let's not use 2.4, that's not so friendly, let's use 2. So our slope is 2. So if I pick a point on this line, the y value equals twice x plus 1. That's what this equation is saying. 2 times x plus 1. That's true here. 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. And then if I go up to other points on the graph, let's say I pick this point, x is 2. 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5, right? y equals twice x plus 1. So if I say y is greater than that, for any uh, point in this region, it'll be true the y value is greater than the value of mx plus 1. So for example, here with 0, 1, let's say I look directly above it to this point right here, 0, 2. Let's just plot that point. So it's true that um, for that point in the region right there, the value of the y, 2, is greater than 0 times 2, 0 <clears throat> times 2 times 0 plus 1, right? The x value times 2 plus 1 is just 1, and 2 is clearly greater than 1. So the y values are greater than the equality established by the line. So if I want to also include that line, I shade it in. If I want to go pick y values that are less than uh, mx plus b, I would pick this region below. So I'm shading all of the points, all the y, the points where the y value is less than twice the x value plus 1. And this is true for any line that I pick. So that's some of the shading background here. With inequalities, what we start to do is we get a collection, uh, systems of inequalities get a collection of these equations. So let's say y is greater than or equal to negative 2 plus x. Okay, there's one of them. And then let's graph x is greater than or equal to 2. And then let's graph y is less than 3. So this is a system right here. And this system, we're looking for points that satisfy all three of these inequalities. So let's just kind of keep track of that. So we, in this first case, we want any point in this region here. But then that region gets smaller. We want now any point in this region here where those two inequalities overlap. And then finally, we narrow it down to this region down here where all three regions overlap. And so we are looking at any point in this region here as satisfying all three inequalities. So let's say I choose 3, 2. Let's, let's see one of those points, 3, 2. And I label it. So 3, 2 actually satisfies all three inequalities. The first one, y 
which is 2, is greater than or equal to negative 2 plus 3. Well, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, right? Plug in the x value, and that is less than or equal to 2. So it satisfies the first inequality. x has to be greater than or equal to 2. It is. It's 3. And y has to be less than 3. It is. It's 2. We're also interested in these vertices of this bounded polygon here. So I'm going to actually draw this freehand so you can see what I mean. And the basic idea, let's just let's sketch this with no help, no help beyond really a ruler. So straight y-axis, straight x-axis. And you can quickly get a sense of how these things are working by sketching them out. So let me just fix that. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, it's not even greatly spaced, right? Uh, but the point is, I want you to see how quickly you can analyze this by hand. So our first line had a y-intercept of negative 2, and then a slope of 1. So it's going to cross 2, 0 as well. So here's our first line. Grab my ruler here, and boom. Okay, so this is, straighten that out a little bit, that's one of the lines. And notice, I'm graphing, actually I start by, in my mind, I'm actually thinking about, I might not write this down, but I'm thinking about the equality y equals negative 2 plus x. And then when I'm thinking of x is greater than or equal to 2, right, here's our inequalities. Let me write them down. y is greater than or equal to negative 2 plus x. x is greater than or equal to 2. Move that one over. Oh, it's, oh I'll just rewrite it. I don't like how it's not lining up. x is greater than or equal to 2, and then y is less than 3. These are inequalities. We're going to graph them as inequalities, but I like to start by thinking about them as equalities. So in the first inequality, I'm thinking actually of this line right here. And that reminds me the slope is, uh, the y-intercept is negative 2 and the slope is 1. Here, I'm thinking of x equaling 2, so I'm thinking of a vertical line at 2. Okay. And I'm going to shade, I'm going to sh save the shading for later. So I'm thinking of x equals 2. And then y is less than 3. Now this is the only one I don't see or equals to. I'm actually going to draw a dashed line right from the start at 3. 1, 2, 3 here. So I'm not using my ruler here. I'm just being a little bit sloppy, but I want you to see my, my intention. So that's why this is actually y is, I'm going to go directly, less than 3. And now I'm going to kind of shift my thinking over fully to inequalities because I think I'm ready for that. And I actually, you know, you might shade as you go. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. This for me gets a little bit messy. So for example, I'm thinking, okay, in the first case, I want it to be greater, y values that are greater than the line negative 2 plus x. So I know I'm going up here above it. But it's also got to be greater than 2. x value is greater than 2, so it's got to be to the right of this line. And I've got to be below this dash right here. So I know intuitively the only way that's satisfied is if I just shade this region. Only points in that region are less than where y equals 3, greater than or, or equal to where x is 2, and greater than, negative two, greater than or equal to, excuse me, negative 2 plus x. So we cho chose a point in that region. But it's also important to recognize that these points right here are valuable. It's not that these points are necessarily a solution to the inequality. In fact, in this case, if I call this A and this B and this C, A and B are not solutions, C is. You could tell that A and B are not solutions because they're on this dotted line right here. Why is that important? Because no points on this dotted line are actually included in Y is less than 3, right? Y has to be less than 3, not equal to 3. And clearly for A and B, since they're on that line, the Y values are 3. So what is the value of these two points? Well, these two points are essentially a type of boundary to this bounded region here where our solutions lie. So even when the, the, these are vertices of a polygon, right, even when the vertices are not solutions, they're valuable because they give us a sense of the boundaries of where our solutions are. So in this case, let's, let's find it. And I used a word that will explain it, bounded region. The idea is you can kind of draw a circle around your region and then close it. So if you can draw a circle around it and close it, or you can think of it as being fenced in, it's called a bounded region. We'll look at, in a moment, infinite regions that are not boundable by a circle or fence. Those are called unbound regions. So let's say I want to find point A. Now I know the height of A is 3. What's the x value? Well. A is at the intersection of x is greater than or equal to 2 and y is less than 3. So if we want to find where those two things meet, what I like to think about is, again, 
equalities, where x equals 2 and y equals 3. So where, where does x equals 2 and y equals 3 meet? Well, they literally meet when x is 2 and y is 3, and that's the value of a point a. And again, this is not a solution to the system. Not a solution to the system. It only, it does satisfy, it does satisfy the first two inequalities. If you plug it in, you'll see that, but it does not satisfy the third. Again, like I said before, the y value is 3. It's not less than 3. And then we go to point B. Point B is at the intersection of this line. So, and this y value, where well, y is less than 3, the, the, that line right there. So y is 3, we know that. And I want to treat it as y equals 3, that inequality. And y equals negative 2 plus x. Okay, so we want to find when these two things meet each other. So I want to use substitution. I'm saying that y equals 3. I'm going to plug that value in here. So 3 equals negative 2 plus x, add 2 to both sides, and x is 5. And here, the, again, this point is also not a solution. Not a solution. Again, because the y value of the y value of this point, 3, is not less than 3. It's 3. So it doesn't work. It doesn't solve the, the system to the system. And look at this. I'm typos here. To the solution. It's not a solution to the system. Sorry about that. Okay, then finally we get to a point that is a solution. It satisfies all three equations, and uh, I'll show you how that works. But then we'll, we'll finish by confirming that points out here that are not shaded in, in this case, are not solutions to the system. So the point C, I mean, you can see what it is. It's 2, 0, but let's just solve it because you can clearly deal with situations that are not so easy. This point is at the intersection of this line and this one. So it's at the intersection of y equals negative 2 plus x y equals negative 2 plus x, and x equals 2. So again, substitution comes into play. I'm going to plug in the fact that x equals 2 into this equation right here. So y equals negative 2 plus 2, which means y is 0. Okay, And we plugged in x equals 2, so that's where the point is. It is a solution. Is a solution to the system. Okay, how do we know that? Like, what does that really mean to say that this is a solution to the system? It means if you plug it into all the inequalities, it works for all of them. So I'm going to plug in, let me write this down, C is the point 2, 0. If I plug in the first system right here, first equation, excuse me, I get 0, that's the y value, is greater than or equal to negative 2 plus 2. That's true, right? 0 actually equals 0, so that's, that works out. X has to be greater than or equal to 2. Well, that works. If I plug in 2, that's clearly greater than or equal to 2. And then finally, y is less than 3. Well, 0 is less than 3. That's the y value here. So it checks out for all of them. When you're checking these systems, you should also test a point outside this region to make sure it's not a solution. Let's try this point right here. We'll call it point D. But I don't need that, that right there. Let me write in a thinner, a thinner font. So let's say I have this point D right here, and it's the point 3, 0. Now we can tell that this point will actually work for this, x is greater than or equal to 2, and this, y is less than 3, but it won't work for y is greater than or equal to negative 2 plus x. And let's, let's see how that plays out. So C did work. I'll plug in D down here. D is the point 3, 0. I'll plug in my first inequality. We'll see that does not work. The y is 0. 0 greater than or equal to negative 2 plus 3. That's not true because... That's, an, that's not an x variable, that's x like incorrect. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1, and that's actually greater than 0. doesn't work. The x value, though, x is greater than 2, that does work. And the y value does work, it's less than 3. So it's important to realize that when you're testing a point, it's only a solution for a system if it satisfies all three inequalities, just like it does in a system of equations. Whereas if a point doesn't work for any of the equations in your system, it's not a solution to the system. So that tends to be how these problems work, right? You, you have a system of inequalities, and one type of thing they can form is a bounded polygon or just a bounded region, a region you can kind of fence in or fit inside a circle. And it's important to check the vertices to get a sense of your bounded region and test a point outside to make sure that's not working. And it's also important, though, to understand what an unbounded region looks like. So let's just clear this off. 
Let's say I have the a graph of a circle, x squared plus y squared. Let's have it equal, I don't know, 36. So the radius is 6. Okay. So this graph is a collection of all the points with the distance from the points to the origin. This is based on the Pythagorean theorem. The distance from the point to the origin is 6. And you can see that here in the on the axes, they're all 6 away. But if you pick any point in between and draw a right triangle to it, use the Pythagorean theorem, you'll see that the distance is also 6. So think about what would it mean if I wrote greater than, so x squared plus y squared. What if I did greater than? What would that mean? Think about that. Let's type it in. Let's say greater than 36. Boom. Here, I get all the points that are more than 6 away from the origin. And if I did less than, I get all the points that are less than 6 away from the origin. If I want to include the circle, I make it or equal to. And if we go back to the original case right here, um, you can see that this actually works. Let's do a little animation of this. Let's animate our parent function right here by changing the radius. So this is r squared. Let's add a slider r, and let's have it start at 6 and go up to 10, just as an example, go in steps of 1. Okay, so here I'm going to animate the circle. I think this should work. Let's see if it works. Boom. And let me, this actually didn't look so smooth. Let me go up by 0.1. Okay. So we're starting off with this circle right here. And I'm going to change the radius so that you can see another way to interpret what this means. Let's do greater than or equal to. Is that this actually includes all the circles with a radius that are greater than or equal to 6. So if I made my radius 6.1, it would be in that region, 6.2, 3, 4, all the circles. And obviously, well, not obviously, but there are infinite circles <laughs> that fit in this characteristic, have a radius greater than 6. So instead of trying to draw a bunch of concentric circles, like a target on a, on a board, uh, we just shade in the whole region. And that's a, so that's a, this is an unbound region. It's essentially an infinite region. I guess you can say that you could try and bound it with some type of infinite shape, but I'm not sure if that makes sense. Essentially, there's no finite circle we can draw around this region or to fence it in. It's called an unbound region. Um, and the last thing I would, would say about bounds is sometimes bounds are implied. Like let's say you're selling something and you're looking at how much you should sell. So you might first have some equation, I don't know, that represents how much money you're making, right? Um, and then you have some other kind of target. So here, like you want to look at this region. Let's say that where y is this way, less than 5 and then greater than negative 2 plus x. But if you're dealing with like a physical situation, you want to think about the implied or feasible constraints on this. And usually it's something like, well, in this case, say we're, we're looking at what we're selling and what's going on, you, and x is the number of things we're selling. You can't sell negative things. You might also add to it that x has to be greater than 0. Another common one is, for some reason, let's say profits can't be less than 0. Maybe it has to be positive as well. And you have these implied constraints, usually with some type of negatives that you can um, also set up into your system. So this system of equations might start off with these two inequalities, but then if you read about the problem, you might add these two inequalities, and I'll show an example in a little bit, at least in the next video, but you might add these inequalities here because they're kind of implied, and then your system goes from two inequalities to four. Finally, um, we're going to be using Desmos a lot with our inequalities, so it's important that you understand how this works. So in one sense, you can just type in greater than or less than like you've seen me do, right, to get some kind of shading. And you can do it for a circle. You saw me do that. Let's see, x squared plus y squared is less than 16, right? Um, you can also shade uh, vertical regions, let's say 0, less than x, less than or equal to 3. You can see it shades it with the dash on one side and the, sh and the full line on the other side. You could do it horizontally. Let's say negative 3 less than or equal to y less than 4. All right, you can get all these regions. But you can also, a, a nice way to work with inequalities on Desmos is to use function notation. So what you would first do is set up an equality in an equation. Let's say x squared plus 3, uh, 2. And no, so minus two. That's what I have in my notes. And then another function. 
as x plus 3. And notice those are not inequalities, they're equalities. But perhaps you want to shade the region between them. You want, uh, you want the region that's less than g, g of x, this line, and more than f of x, this parabola. So what you could do is say that y has to be greater than g of x and less than f of x. And did I get it backwards? Yes. <laughs> f of x and g of x, like between them, right? So y values that are greater than f of x, the parabola, but less than the line right here. And you can, so what you can do on decimals is set up a bunch of equalities in function notation and then limit the outputs some, in some way between those functions. This ends up being really useful. So what we'll look at in the next video is an application of all of this and to understand why linear um, inequalities and, and systems of inequalities in general can be used to solve so many important problems. All right, thanks.